Um, just to recap, my name is Amanda Jenkins and I shall be doing the session this morning. Uh, I've been with Silverleaf for 23 years, so I've gained a lot of knowledge on slings and their suitability. So what I'm going to do today is just try and share some of that knowledge. The session today is to look at standard sling shapes. And these standard sling shapes will be well known within the industry, but often therapists and healthcare professionals like yourselves, it can be very confusing. So it, there seems to be thousands of styles, different colours, but actually they're based on six standard sling shapes. So every company will have a comparable to one of those six. So I'm hoping that I will be able to share the story behind each of those shapes. And then we will talk about their suitability, um, the advantages and the limitations for each of the styles, what we can add on to them, uh, and when you'd use them. So, you know, that's what the content of the session will be. We've got lots of helpful um, information we can share with you. Lots of helpful posters. The website's got loads of help. So, you know, we're trying to help you out with all that information that you may need. So to start with, I will, are we all good? Everything technically good? We'll just bring up um, the poster. So um, our marketing team are helping me as well. So um, Steph, if you could kindly bring up the poster. Um, this is a standard poster showing the styles that we're going to talk about. And you can see the drawings. These are the six um, standard sling shapes. Everything we do is based on one of these six. So even our most complicated slings will be based on one of those styles. And we know what each style can do. We know when they're suitable. We know when they're not so suitable. So, you know, if we're problem solving, we'll think about, OK, we look at the condition, we look at the scenario, what transfer is required, and then we go to that shape. We look at that shape, look at the sizing, look at the fabrics any extras. So we build the picture from one of those shapes. So that's the plan. We're going to look at those, each of these individually. This poster is available. You know, you can have it after the session, little bullet points. Um, and our marketing team will share each of the links to each of the uh, products we we'll talk about. So they will pop up in the chat from the marketing team, not some random person. So it is, I can reassure you, somebody from Silverly. So, right, thanks, Steph. So let's start at the beginning. I've got the very first shape, and I've got my colleague, Julie, who's helping me today. Julie um, has been here longer than me, so she's got a lot and lot of knowledge, um, manufacturing as well. So um, any questions, just chat to us. We want this to be a really useful session. Um, and beneficial to you guys. So please do chat to us. Standard sling. So this is, uh, I'll just talk about the sling in, or slings in general. So standard slings are made in polyester. So polyester is a good robust fabric. Uh, the safe working load for all the standards from extra, extra small to extra, extra large is 220. So safe working load for all those sizes is 220 or 35 stone. And that is calibrated when the sling was developed. So everything on this sling we know will take that weight. So the fabric choice, the binding, the webbing, the threads, the stitches per inch, everything has been highly calibrated so that we can be, you know, you're reassured that we will provide a product that is fit for purpose. The labelling on sling. The labels are very important and you must always check prior to use that the label is clear, it's visible. If you haven't got a clear visible label um, and it's legible, then you're going to contravene LOLA regulations. So LOLA state that you must have clear um, legible information. So there could be some safety information on there that you need to check. So safe working load, sizing, washing, anything specific, you know, is clearly labelled, um, detailed on the label. Silverly now have a woven label. So these are all woven. 
so it reduces fading. So in the past, we've had printed ones, which can over time, you know, fade. But these now are really more robust because they're they're woven. So it's very clear. On the label, you will have each individual product code, per product, product, any safety information per product. So it is important that you check that. If the label has faded, then it, it's often down to inappropriate laundering. So possibly strong biological bleaching detergents, medication, um, high washing and drying temperatures. You know, we do know when something has been laundered incorrectly by the evidence that is presented and it clearly the label can um, be affected, binding can be affected, um, there's discoloration so we do know and if you do dry high temperature then any padding can shrink so you know there is telltale signs if it's been laundered incorrectly. And also, interestingly, we do state a non-biological powder because that tends not to have any bleaching agents. However, some of the cheaper ones do have whitening agents, which acts the same. So you just really need to check. But the laundering um, details are on the label. Standard slings can be washed to 85, double dried low. Um, some of the more delicate fabrics will be different. So that's why it's important to check the labelling and all the care instructions that we issue with instructions, just so that you have a, a, a sling that will last and will be you know, good value. The other label on the sling is the size. Sizing across the industry can be similar. Small, medium and large tends to be uniform. Small is red, medium is yellow, um, green is large. It's when the sizes are larger or smaller that they can vary. But on the whole, they do um, follow the small, medium, large. So this is medium, which is yellow. So clear labelling, colour coding. Each label also, the sizing label, will have a unique barcode and serial number. So, you know, we can trace the sling if we need to. If you need to reorder slings and you're not sure what it was, we can track it by that. And then there is a service label which is in line with Lola. So Lola state that hoist slings need to be serviced every six to 12 months. So you need to get your products checked and it's a competent check. So the check is to check that the binding is intact, the label is legible, the webbing straps are complete. There's no signs of any wear, snagging, stitch failure. These tapes have an incredible strength. So applied in a directional way, then the safe working load is enormous on that. However, if it's been caught, pulled in a non-directional way, caught in a handle and hoist, you know, you could then get wear in that way. But directional, then the strength is enormous. So, you know, it's a common check. Check the binding around the aperture is intact, things like that. So, you know, we always encourage people to check prior to use because things won't just fail in one lift. It will be over time. So you just need to always encourage that. So that's basically about sling. Um, this is, as I said, the fast fit. We call it a fast fit. Standard shape, very well known. Other companies will call it a quick fit, easy fit, general purpose, universal. Lots of different names. But if you get familiar with the shape, then we know what we can do and what we can't do with this sling. Now I'm going to put it on Julie so we can see and talk about the sling. As you can see, we've got a nice open chair. Thank you. Um, you know, we're not moving and handling advisors. We're, we're not going to teach you how to do um, specific manoeuvres and transfers and manual handling. You know, we're just product specialists. So we are going to cheat a lot and make it look easy. But for the you know, the nature of the session, it's all about the product. It's got a divided leg, which means you can insert it in a chair, or if you're applying it on the bed, then you just need to be mindful that you're either having a single head support to support the head, or you've got a profiling bed, um, but we're going to do it in the chair initially. This needs to be applied to the base of spine. 
it's very important to get the sling down to the base. Often people will apply the sling and try and match up the top section to the shoulders. That'll sort itself out when we hoist. But the key thing is to get it down to the base and the leg sections around towards the back of the knee. So we've got more support down to the lower half. If you're applying this leg section sort of mid to quite high, it's just going to bite in, it'll be uncomfortable. So start with it towards the back of the knee as far as you can, Julie's applied at the end. Then we cross the leg tape through. That's going to help keep the legs together. There's a standard way of applying it. If we don't connect the legs, the legs will naturally splay. That may be the preferred application, but that will be down to your individual risk assessment. So that's working out the best application. So the standard way is to cross the legs. The slings have got colour coding loop options. So, you know, it's all about working out the positioning. It may need to be adjusted, but we'll start with the general idea is to start with a short shoulder long leg. So if we start there, we'll see how we then get on. A short shoulder long leg would give us a fairly good upright position. And the other important thing is to just take up the slack. So take up the slack off the hoist, ensure we've got everything connected, something's not just flicked off, because we don't want to then carry on if we haven't got all tapes on. And just check, check that Julie's comfortable, you know, is the right size, it's the right shape before we carry on. Okay. So this is often known as a general purpose sling, and it is a general shape, a universal shape. It's very well known and used for general transfers. So I, I always refer this as the first family of slings and it's a general standard sling. It will give full body support. So it's giving full body support to someone that has got variable tone or lower, you know, lower tone and needs extra support from the sling. There is an aperture, so there's enough access if you need to carry out a transfer for hygiene reasons. So as long as clothing's been removed, you can undertake that with this style. So it's perfectly possible. As you see, the padding to the legs, that comes through. So very standard. I, I would say use this as a standard, um, in a standard situation, a compliance situation, um, symmetrical shape. Because if, if Julie was wriggly, you just extend. This is going to shoot up into her groin. So if she's active and wriggly, you're not going to get a lot of comfort. It's really going to be really uncomfortable in the groin. Also, what can happen as the leg sections come around, they come around and they go up to the waist, you can get some slight external rotation of the hip. Very subtle, but if you've got someone that's got really painful joints, arthritis, osteoporosis, any fragile bone scenario, that can really have an impact. So, you know, this is to be avoided then in that situation. So just think of this as standard scenario. So are we okay so far? Are we okay, Ray? Yep. What we can do, let me just explain. This is the polyester. So I'm doing just hold oh, see that's in the spin. Um polyester standard fabric. The standard things we will put handles on, guide and handles, just to help with guiding. Some people like those, some think they promote bad practice of pulling, so you can never use the edges. But the standard things we will provide it with the handles on. The other option of fabric is mesh. So this is a mesh fabric. And you can see that this has got holes in. Same style, but often used for bathing, so the water will drain through. However, however, people still use that for bathing, just the water pools a bit, but you can use both um, options there. That's that's another option of fabric. Add-ons, let's just 
talk about what we can add on to this one if we need to. The standard sling, we may need to have a bit more support to the head. So the neck roll is a good accessory rather than have full head support. And this will fit through the shoulder loops and fit within the sling. I'll show you that. But neck rolls, I think, are really quite good because they just nestle in the neck like that. So rather than having a full head support that can force the head forward, then a soft neck roll like that could be positioned to the sides if needed. Um, if you've got someone that leans over, but it just fits in behind the neck and then secures through the loop on the shoulder. Probably do not do it. Yeah. And then back into the sliders. And once you've got it secured, then you can leave it in position. Um, welcome. We've got some new viewers. Welcome. Um, if you would kindly turn your cameras off um, so that we can. Because we are recording the session. That's lovely. Thank you very much, guys. Uh, we're just looking at the, the addition to a standard, which is the um, neck roll there. So, yes, think about that. However, if you need a full head support. Then the sling will look like this. So we've got the fast fit sling, but with an arched head support. So full arched head support. And it, it fits. Oh, that sure. It imagined. And uh, you went to the middle. So it fits on same same fitting. But the neck, the head support is a full arch head support here with removable bones if you need to take the bones out. And then there's tapes that you feed through the shoulder tape to secure on a slider. So as you know, adjustable if needed. So the full head support, thanks to with mesh, little mesh panels, just to give it a little bit of peripheral vision. So that's the um, addition of a head support there. The only other thing that we add to a standard would be a waist support or a chest support. So they are soft, usually in the same colour and fabric as the sling. Waist would be naturally at the waist, chest at the chest or under the bust. The position is down to you. If you're avoiding a peg or you need to um, you know, have it in a specific place, then just tell us. Often people like a waist support, particularly children um, in children's situation, so that it just indicates where the sling is fitting. So it's good for um, positioning when it's applied to know why we've got the waist support in the right place. Everything else will sort itself out. So often um, it's added to a standard sling. So that's the story of the fast fit. The only other way of using this is to hammock the legs. So if you need to hammer the legs, they're long enough to do so. And that is by laying them on top of each other like a seat. So they go under. And that one goes under. So it picks up like a hammock like that. I will just put that on there. Now this is fine. But it will close the legs together. So if you if you need to do this, mm. then just be mindful that it's going to close the legs together. So we need to be thinking about any if anyone's got painful mm. knees and the hips, but it's perfectly capable. The other thing is you're quite vulnerable. So I know some areas over the years have sort of frowned upon this type of pickup. So you'd think about using this if you've got a compliant situation, maybe someone that wears a dress or a skirt, doesn't like the divided leg. Um, maybe you need to pick up slightly tilted um, or reclined, add a chest or waist support to make it more secure. But absolutely fine as long as you risk assessed the suitability of this type of application. It will also close the aperture. So it is possible, but those are the drawbacks with that. Are we, have we got any questions, Ray? No, no, no. Okay, so hopefully you're happy with that. 
So we've seen the shape, we know what it does, we know the advantages and we know the disadvantages. Treat it as a very standard sling. So we'll move on to the next style. So just looking at the neck shape, we've got, we're looking at the fast fit and lux um, for our marketing guys. Can you think that, Julie, please? I'm going to compare them so you can be able to see the differences. So fast fit, and this is the fast fit deluxe. Fast fit deluxe, quick fit deluxe, easy fit deluxe, lots of names, but this is the shape. It's a very square shaped sling with very square angled legs. So we'll put it on and explain a little bit about this background of this one. Again, it's a divided leg sling, so we need to put it on. Or it can be easily applied in the, in the chair. The leg paddles are quite square and they come around and wrap around each femur. Again, position them towards the knee. Ensure the sling is as low as possible in the seat. And then with this one, we've got a modesty strap across the width of the leg there and you connect the legs together. So that connects them like that. It's a bit more of a fiddle. And then you take the outside tape, the long outside tape, and feed it through one of the inner ones, depending on the width by circumference. So this is now slightly different, it's picking the leg up on the outside. If you just attach it, we're going short shoulder long leg. And then again, just take up the slack. Mm -hmm. Just to ensure we've got everything connected. And put it in the right position. You okay? So it's different. This is a different shape. I told you. It's a, it's a job on you. So <laughs> this sling is now picking the leg up from the outside. So compared to the first one, it's picking up here. So much more support to the hip and the leg. So no rotation like the first one. So remember the first one could have a bit of drag to externally rotate that hip. This is picking up from the outside. So it's a much better style for anyone that needs support to the hip um, and more comfort. A bit more fiddly for the carer, but a better, more comfortable sling. Individual um, legs. So the legs act individually. So if Julie's a bit wriggly, be a bit wriggly individual control now and it's not going to shoot up into the groin like the first style so you know it is a better shape will suit more situations it is still a full body sling full body support um with an aperture so certainly you know there's room for toileting if needed the paddle legs here support the full femur so it has been used for long limb amputations because the residual limb then will nestle within that leg paddle but often amputees always a big big worry um and what do you use most standard slings you can um try if it's a long limb amputation so knee and below standard slings could be considered it's when the residual leg is quite high then the worry is there's no weight in the stump. So it's going to sort of not have any support and it might slip back through the aperture. So I think with amputees, always think about, you know, if there's a knee and below, then we're okay. Anything shorter, then we'll look at a different style. But this one, so it's the fast fit deluxe we're looking at. This one can be done in mesh. It can have all the extras on, the head support. Um, the neck roll um, or chest or waist support if needed. But because of its shape, the square shape, it will hammock very well. So often it has been called a hammocky type sling because of the shaping. It's quite a bulky, uh, big bulky sling. Sizing does vary across the board. Um, it's like clothing. Sometimes you're in a sort of 
one size in one manufacturer and then another size in another manufacturer. But this is a really square full sling, so it may be you need to go down a size. But with hammocking, the legs, again, they wrap like a seat and then take the long tape through the shorter one to pick up. So the same principle as the first one, but because of the square legs, this will hammock really well. But just be mindful um, about not being too upright. You wouldn't use it if you've got someone that's got lots of movement because you are quite vulnerable. So how are we doing? OK, Ray? So this is the Fast Fit Deluxe. You know, a good a good shape um, for many situations. But that's it. So if you hold that, Julie. So I'm going on now to the Universal Deluxe. So the Universal Deluxe has a very similar principle to the legs, but has slightly more shaping. And this is the Universal Deluxe I'm holding. More discreet, it's less generous, and the leg angles mean that it will wrap around the leg and the hip in a really good way. And I will show you this one. This is my preferred sling. This is um, a go good go-to sling because we know it has met the needs of many situations successfully. So I often you know, will suggest this in certain situations. Again, apply it if it's applied in the sling, in the seat, get it down low. Ensure the leg paddles are wrapped around the femur towards the knee. Always take the leg paddle towards the knee to start with. This one's got a loop to connect them together. And then the outside tape feeds through. Compared to the last one, it's less generous. So it's not so bulky. So this is a shape that we would um, consider doing in a fabric that can be left in for extended periods because it's not so big. There's not so much excess fabric. Big one, short, short, uh, long leg. And yellow, big on the yellow. The loops do, it does vary um, because this is a discrete sling or, or less fabric. I'm just gonna drop the shoulders down a bit. Mm. Again, let me just check. So there's less fabric, so you can see straight away the other one was quite enclosing. This one, it's less fabric, so see, but it's still part of the deluxe thing shapes. So deluxe tend to be these paddle legged type things which wrap around the femur. So really good shape, picking up the leg from the outside still. So good for anyone that's got painful joints. Um, rigolas, individual control by those leg paddles, which work. And also good if you've got some a slight asymmetrical shape. So if you've got someone with a curvature um, or scoliosis and they've got slight um, wingswept hip, hips, then the leg paddles will naturally adjust or readjust to their um, the optimum um, pickup position because of that asymmetrical body shape. So it's a really good shape sling that you can use for different situations and adjust. Still full body, still aperture for toileting. Um, again, polyester, mesh, add on your head support, et cetera. But what I've got with this one, and then it will stop spinning, is I've added a tape at the hip. So this is a hip tape and they are removable. And they can be added to most styles. This is a, a removable tape. It's on a slider. So you can adjust the tension. And at the top, there's a little bar or um, metal D ring. And that's so that if we extend this fully, I don't lose that loop at the end. So that's why there's a little bar there. So once we've got the right setting, push that bar out of the way. But they feed on and not back on themselves. And the idea is that it will help to lift the hip and it's very subtle. If you can imagine you've got someone that's hoisted like this, you put a tape here, it just does that. 
and it's really helpful for anyone that's got pain. Um, it lifts that area, distributes the weight and takes pressure from behind the knee. So heavy legs, painful joints, um, arthritis, all that type of situation. Having a, a tape here. And it needs to be adjusted. I have to lower Julie down to do this, but it needs to pick up simultaneously with a leg like that. You have it too tight, it's going to force the hips up first. If it's too loose, it won't do anything. So you need to get the tension right. Once you've got the tension right, you can then just adjust your slider and just check. So it's all just working it out. But also a good option if you've got an asymmetrical shape. So you've got someone that's very got curvature and they're really leaning significantly to one side and you're, you've got a carrot trying to hold them in, then you can then adjust the tapes asymmetrically. Your slings are very versatile. And I know you have to be inventive and sometimes problem solved like that, but you can quite safely pick up shorter one side so you can have shorter, different colour. So don't think they've got to be absolutely symmetrical. If you've got an asymmetrical shape, then you can adjust the sling so that that will help. Could reduce the care, the carers. It could help giving more support. Just for that transfer from A to B, you've got someone then that just slightly adjusted by using the tapes in a different way. The, certainly the hip tapes will help because they're on a slider. So as long as you've really risk assessed and documented it clearly in the care plan that this is what we're doing um, because it's better for um, this patient, then absolutely fine. How are we doing, Ree? Yeah, no. good. No. Everyone's OK. Hopefully it's all not too confusing. But this, this is the Universal Deluxe. The Universal Deluxe. Um, but it's very popular. It's certainly, you know, a really good go to style. And will be very comfortable, yeah. more comfortable because of those paddles than a standard sling. So often, you know, this is this is a much better shape. So we've seen three styles. Uh, so we're going to look at. Mm. On that, I'm going to bring in the, the fine. So we've just got a different hoist next to. Um, so we're looking at the recline, and this is um, a very different shape. It's like an oblong. So we'll we'll talk about this. Still a full body sling, but it's an oblong shape. So the oblong shape means we're going to have to apply it on the bed. There's no divided leg aperture, so if you're applying it in a chair, then it's, it's very difficult. But this is a complete seat type pickup. Um, we call this one the um, recline. And it's made, this particular one is made in a, a fabric that can be left in for extended periods, because often you'll get this on, it's tricky then to get off. So the best thing is to leave it underneath subject to your risk assessment for suitability. But the shape is simple. It has a little pommel in the middle. So this pommel is a strap that lifts the centre. And by lifting the centre, it helps to balance the legs. They're not pushed fully together. They're more balanced. Without that pommel, sometimes they are, it's forced together. But this will help just to lift. There's a soft padded roll there, but I've got this set up for an amputee, as you can clearly see. Um, it's a very good go to style for all amputee situations because it's a full seat. There's no aperture. Um, so consequently, there's no risk of the stump slipping back. So it's often used for um, high through hip type situations. But equally, it's very um, suitable for other general situations. It does have provision for a hip tape, so they can be added, which we've talked about that. There's a loop there, so you can have the addition of that. We do ones with neck um, head support, so you can have your neck roll, your chest strap, things like that. But just to stand, you know, for 
I say mm -hmm. it will suit most situations. The only time I would be wary is if you've got someone with very challenging behaviour that extends um, because, you know, it is a seat. So I think we just need to be mindful that perhaps someone with that type of um, scenario, it wouldn't be suitable for. But if you're looking at that, that's the um, in situ recline. Are we OK, Brie? OK. okay. So that's like the fourth family of styles. We'll now go to the toilet and sling. So all the things we've seen are fairly full bodied. You know, they will support someone with poor, low tone. Um, whereas, as you can see, this one, there's not much to it. So this is, um, we call it a dress sling. It could be called a hygiene, um, dressing, um, lots of names, toileting. But this is primarily people want this. So if, they, if you want a toileting sling, most of the styles we've seen you can use for toileting. But people think I need to do a, have a toileting sling, I've got to have this. Well, this isn't always suitable because you can see there's not much to it. There's going to be a very big aperture there. The silverly ones are made with a front click and velcro thickening. And they have a little bit of shaping at the top. So this bit of shaping here is scalloping, means when we put it on, then there's a bit more access. And the other feature is the waist support here is stitched as far as possible to the sides here. So you've got lots of, can you just hold that please? lots of as much support as possible to the side it goes right around here there are some that are stitched back here and that makes massive difference because there's a more movement but this is as, as supportive as we can make it we put easy to put on i mean carers love this because of course it's easier to get on you've not got to struggle to get it too low it's when you go into the belt line so it's going down to the belt line here. And of course, you know, it's easier to get to rather than having to get the sling as far down as possible. So Velcro, plunk click, padded legs again applied around the thigh. As you would a normal sling. And then there's a loop to connect them. As mentioned, you know, if you don't want to connect them, the legs will naturally splay, so you need to risk assess um, for suitability if the legs are left unconnected. All right, so we've got short, we're going to go on the green for this one. Arms are going on the outside. We'll just take up the slack. Check everything's on. And you will see that straight away we have got a lot of access for dressing, toilet, toileting, etc. So you can see the access we get, the side where it's scalloped. So we can see. However, we can also see what would happen if Julie lost tone. And this is possibly what you've seen. And often as people, you know, their condition changes, their tone may deteriorate, and they are then reluctant to give this up. But there will be a point where it's not going to be suitable. Mm. However, I can share a couple of tips. Let's just do it properly. Mm. There's three little um, tips that will help with the life of using this. The first tip is to ensure that you fit the waistband at the waist it is a waistband, not a chest strap. So it's got to be fitted at the waist and under the bust of the knee, and as firmly as possible. So fit it as firmly as possible, the Velcro and then the plunk click. So that's the first thing, make sure it's low because even with those that have got good tone, the sling will naturally ride up as the hoist takes up the slack. So, you know, you, you don't want it to start straight up here, there's no effort to go, so keep it fitted low. 
that's the first tip. Double touch it again. Leg, wing, shoulder. Arms on the outside. The next tip. So with the majority of people, so I'll just as the voice takes up the slack, show this. So you sat down, voice takes up the slack, the body naturally will thin out and elongate. At that point, the waistband will loosen off. So the key thing is tighten it, pull that waistband to keep the sling down. So we've gone. And you'll find it will adjust. There we go. And the third thing is sometimes you need to think about the smaller size. So it's best thing not to have this style too generous. Go down size. So if you need to, go down size. But let's check. Can you sub through it now? Are you trying? Yes. Bounce down. So we fitted it better, we fitted it low, we've readjusted and it means there's a lot more support. So I really do encourage you to check that for, you know, safety. So those are the five standard slings that are suitable on this type of hoist. So hoists are really important and it's a good time to mention them. So the suitability of the sling or the success of the sling is often down to the hoist as well. So, you know, you do need to be mindful that that was wide enough for Julie. So this spread of ours is quite wide. So it's going to take the sling out. If you've got a narrow spread of bar, then the sling is going to take the sling to that spread of bar. So if you've got anyone that's got really painful joints, or they're more shapely and they've got lots of issues with um, contraction, then the sling will just naturally find the spread of our width. So you've got to really consider that, particularly for very complex scenarios um, and challenging situations, because that's just a two point one here. But, you know, it will fold someone up. If you need to try and open the pickup out, you may get to four point. So if someone that needs um, more an open type pickup, they are four point ones. So there's lots of options um, and the hoist manufacturers now do have lots that they can try. Um, so don't think you're stuck, you know, with the significance um, scenarios that you have to go to that type of hoist. You really do need to check if, if you've got a big problem with um, comfort and the pickup you know, you look at the hoist as well. Standard loop and tiny spread of ours, but the other style is a stud type hoist. Primarily they're in hospitals in the acute sector, but it's a very different type of hoist um, and it requires a clip. This is a clip because you've got a stud on the hoist and you need a sling that's got a clip that locks on to that stud. So you can't put the loops on. All the slings we've seen so far got loops. They would just fall straight off. So if you if you come across this type of voice, nice open wishbone spread of bar. It's great, you know, the fact that you haven't got this, the hoist in your face. There's only one option of a shoulder, shoulder, leg. So much simpler for carers. However, you can only have certain slings. And if you have this, we have the high easy, the high easy shape sling and the high easy range is the only range that will go on a stud hoist. So if you're looking at the website, then we have our slings divided into loops and clips. So, you know, if you don't ever need this, you can discount it. But if you do, then go to the clip range and it'll give you options. And the sling is, it looks like a universal shaped sling with a head support. But because the legs are going up to a clip just above the knee here, 
the legs on the sling are significantly shorter because they're only coming up here. They're not going up here. So, it, you know, it's very specific. But we do a few options. Uh, this is the basic one. Always will have a head support because the pickup will find the natural center of gravity, which can be slightly reclined. So we always put a full head support on this. So although nice, it's a good shape. We can't put the hip tapes on, so there's nowhere to put hip tape. And you can't use the nice divided um, deluxe legs. It's got to be this shape only. So over the years, I've been to um, some places where they have very challenging situations, but they have this hoist. And the only option is to provide this shape sling. And that won't suit someone that's very asymmetrical, hanging out and legs windswept because you can't adjust the, the sling at all. But we're governed by the hoist. So it's, you know, it's a good tip just to remember. Right, I think we're nearly there. See how we're doing. Um, Ray, have we got any questions? No, no questions. I'll just quickly show you um, measuring. So each style there on the website, there's a data sheet, sizing guide, um, shape guide with lots of helpful measurements where to measure because you will have to measure in different places. But standard, June, wouldn't mind. Standard slings require shoulders. So shoulders around the shoulders, top of the shoulders, just down from the top because that's where the arm is fuller to give you a better um, size sling. So just there. And it's the circumference around the shoulders there. And it's important that you have got someone that's in a nice, natural, open line. They're not all curled up because that will affect the measurement. As you take them up, their shoulders will open and it may be too small. So get them into nice midline, arms down. And the other measurement is from the back. Back length, C7, knobbly bit behind the neck to base of spine. On the standard slings, that will be base of spine is the top of the bottom there, bony bit, top of the bottom, if we can find that, um, to give that. So those generally are the standard slings. Thank you. So then you can look at the guide to give you an idea whether they fit into a standard. Often they may not, so we may have to mix and match. If they are totally um, asymmetrical, asymmetrical, disproportionate, then we can tailor make. We've got a very good um, service where we can do an e-assessment with you, then we can be there with you and help you measure, explain what to do. We do have some dealers. If you need someone, some help, please come to us and we will give you the options. Um, it depends where you are in the country and we can certainly help with assessments. Um, but, you know, we, we've got lots of help. So please don't think you're on your own. Um, there is lots of help. So I think we are nearly there. The only other thing I was going to mention is that we do have an alternative tape. These are called slots, they're safety slot tapes. And occasionally on some styles of sling, they're standard, but they are available if, on request if you do need them. It's a very different looking sling tape, but actually it works in the same way. It's color coded the same and they are streamlined. So they're very fine streamlined. They will fold up neatly and tuck away if, you, if you've got a sling that you need the tape tucked away and it's not all loops and um, getting caught and tangled up. So exactly the same strength. Everything's been calibrated carefully to do the same. Oh, thanks, Steph. Good feature on the website to explain this. But, you know, if you've got a sling with lots of tapes, then maybe they're not going to get all caught up if you have the safety slot tape. They don't, you know, the wheels will roll over them. They're not going to get tangled up and caught. Um, hands don't get tangled up. So, you know, just have a look at that if you need to. If you need more information, then certainly we will help you with that. Have we forgotten anything? Um, I don't, don't think so. I think I've covered everything, but but 
just looking at those six shapes. So think about if you're trying to work out a style, each of them has a story. Um, you know what each of them does, what they don't do. Um, so even when we're working out the very complicated situations, we will look at the condition and any associated issues and start with one of those shapes. But even our very, very complicated tailor-made slings are based on one of those to start with. And then they end up either being tailored, um, added, things added on, on special fabrics, etc. But basically everything's based on one of those six. So although you may think there's thousands and thousands of options, actually every company will have one of those six shapes. And hopefully this session has helped you recognise that and take the mystery out of the sling business. So hopefully it's been helpful. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you to our marketing ladies and to June for helping me. If there's any final questions, then please, um, there's time to put it in the chat now. But if not, uh, we will um, support any, any, any queries you have. But Steph's just brought up that, the poster. So we do have, which might be helpful. A selector, sorry, um, Steph, if you can bring the selector back up. The Sling Selector poster is a, at a glance, um, poster of all our products that are on the website. This is really good if you're trying to select a range um, and they're, they're put detailed in their families. So you, the first line is the straight leg, general purpose shapes. Second line is the deluxe legs. So we've talked about these shapes. So this is, you know, the standard options, the in situ options, any sort of slight variation on those families. They're all listed um, here. There's also some harnesses. There's in situ. There's uh, all the accessories. So if you would like this poster, then we, we will email you after the session and ask if you would kindly fill in our little feedback form and then we'll send you on a, a poster but quite useful and um, then you can see what we do basically and then go to the website for more information so thank you thank you very much for your time and hopefully we'll see you in future sessions um and yes thank you very much guys have a good day thank you